In this HVACR training video, we're going over the difference of measuring electrical resistance versus continuity, and we're going to be using some wires, switches, and relays in order to discuss our points. To troubleshoot HVAC systems, we use a multimeter and we set it to the electrical resistance function in order to test components. And so right now, we're actually reading in mega ohms. And so this right here on the right is the omega sign, and that refers to ohms, that's the units. And then this says mega right now, so it's not connected. Let's go ahead and connect our alligator clips from one point to another, and you see that we're connected right here inside of a wire nut. And so that means that we have 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance between these two probes. That means that the circuit is closed and there's no electrical resistance between these two points. If there was electrical resistance, that will be a problem since it's gonna lower the voltage going between the two electrical points in order to power a system. So what that means is that's gonna result in a voltage drop from point A to point B if you have electrical resistance here, but we don't have any right now. That's indicated by 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance, it's connected. Now, if we were to disconnect this, you can see our two points are not connected, and so we're reading OL, and that means open line. It could also mean over limit. Uh, it can mean a bunch of different things, but essentially the meaning is the same. That means it's not connected. And so you have an air gap between the two wires. The circuit is open. Now, what I wanna point out is if you don't have 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance when you are connecting your probes together, that's a problem. So right now we have 0, 0.0 ohms, so our probes are intact, but if you had an electrical resistance such as this right here, that's telling you that you should switch those probes out for newer probes uh, because you're not gonna get an accurate resistance reading. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, if we were to press the select button right now, you just hear a beeping noise. That beeping noise means that our circuit is connected. So you can hear the beeping noise anytime that we have a closed electrical wire, right? Our closed circuit. The problem with that is, is you're not really measuring the electrical resistance. You're relying on the sound to tell you if the switch is open or closed. It's open right now, and now it's closed. And so I want to point this out because you really want to be watching the electrical resistance on the multimeter, not just listening to the beeping noise. So now I want to take a look at this right here. We're going to reset this back onto our electrical resistance, not our continuity, because our continuity is our beep noise. Electrical resistance is no beep noise, and we'll just be able to read the electrical resistance on the meter. Of course, you can read the electrical resistance even with continuity, but human nature means that you're just listening to the sound. So right now you see 19.5 ohms of electrical resistance. If you were a technician in the field and you were just checking to see if this, uh, basically this wire section was intact, then if we were to go ahead and check our electrical resistance in continuity, right now, even with 6.6 .6 ohms of electrical resistance, it's saying that this wire is closed or the switch is, is intact and it's closed. The problem is that it's not really closed. You have a problem. So you have to address the problem of high electrical resistance through this section of wire. You should be reading 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance through this or maybe 0.1 ohm of electrical resistance. And so this section of wire needs to be replaced or the connections need to be cleaned and maybe crimped down. You need to make sure that these connection points are making good contact with whatever you're connecting them to in an HVAC system. And so this could cause intermittent problems. It can cause voltage drop. It can cause uh, not enough electrical power going to a device. And what can happen is this little connection point is gonna heat up and you're gonna have a melting or even a potential fire if the connection points are not tight. And especially if you have high electrical current traveling across here because a motor is being powered. And so you can see this right here, this is not good. And so we could just read right across this wire right here. And on this one, we're measuring 59 kilo ohms. So that's not regular ohms, that's 59,300 ohms across this little tiny section of wire because it has corroded connections. This is the type of stuff that you need to watch out for visually and when you're testing with your multimeter. Now let's check out this switch. So this is a, a door switch. 
And so this is like for a gas furnace. So right now we're measuring, oh well, because the door switch is open. Now let's go ahead and close this down all the way. So you can see 10 ohms, 27 ohms. It depends on how hard I push this down. If I push it down real hard, then we should have very close to 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance. Right now you see 0.2. Let's just try this again. See, this door switch is old. Uh, the contacts inside are a little bit pitted. Just depends on how hard I push this down as far as what kind of electrical resistance we have here. And so this can cause an intermittent problem on a gas furnace. It will cause it not to operate. And you'll be driving yourself batty trying to figure out what the problem really is. And so here we have a thermal limit switch and I have this opened up and we can take a look inside here and just take a close up look at these contacts. And these contacts are looking like they're pretty burnt. And so that's pitted contacts in here. And the pitted contacts mean that it's not making a very good electrical contact even when the switch is closed. So like this, closed. So right here we have another thermal limit switch and you see this back cover is, is on. I was just showing you what it looks like on the inside. Before testing with electrical resistance, make sure to turn the power off to the HVAC system and disconnect the wire or the component from the rest of the system in order to isolate it. This will make sure that you get a good valid reading and not an incorrect one. Now let's take a look at a contactor. And so what we have here is a 120 volt transformer right here that goes down to 24 volts. And so the transformer is taking 120 and the output is 24 volts and we're powering the sides of the contactor. And what's happening is we're applying 24 volt power to this coil down here and it's turning into an electrical magnet when it's powered. And it's going to suck this contact downwards because there's an iron core in there. It's going to suck the iron core down towards the middle of the magnet down here. And so you can see it's burnt in here. Uh, so I just want to go ahead and show you what this looks like. We're going to go ahead and turn power on to this, to this transformer. This wire is not uh, touching the uh, contactor right here. Now, here's the other thing. This, this I get asked a lot. And the question is, how are you checking electrical resistance when you're powering a contactor? Shouldn't you be testing for voltage? But right now, we're powering the coil, which is completely separate from the contacts up here. These you can check with electrical resistance. Of course, you could also check with voltage going across here, but you, you do not want to be uh, checking this with a multimeter when you're drawing a high current. So right now our multimeter says OL, which means open line. So we have an open line in this circuit, which is this switch right here. We're going to apply power to the transformer, and the transformer is going to apply power to the base of the contactor. So right now we're measuring one ohm of electrical resistance, and what happens is when you're drawing high current across here, say in order to power a refrigerant compressor, you're going to end up heating up at the contact because that's where you have high electrical resistance at. And it's going to end up eventually melting it, either melting it together where the compressor is not turning off or melting it to the point where the, the contacts are so pitted that they really don't close completely. And so right now we should be reading 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance. We're not. We're measuring about one ohm. Turn the power off to it. Let's check it again and see if the electrical resistance changes. See, this time you see 47 ohms, and that's because those contacts uh, are kind of uh, all melted and pitted, and they're not making good contact down here on the lower contact. So let's take an up-close view of what burnt contacts look like. And so as you can see, this is a danger. This is a hazard. You could potentially have a fire right here. And so this is the kind of stuff that you need to be aware of. So now we're powering this again. Now this time we have 5.9 ohms. Continuity would say that we're fine. If you were just listening to this and not looking at the, the multimeter, and of course you could just look at the uh, display right here. So I really see no use for the electrical continuity function, uh, even though some people do like it. I'm always looking at the display. 
So I hope this video has helped, and if you want to learn more about electrical troubleshooting, I've got other videos linked down in the description section below, and we have full articles listed at our website at acservicetech.com articles. And if you want to learn about charging refrigerant into air conditioning systems, make sure to check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book, and also make sure to check out our new book on mini split systems. So that's the Inverter Mini Split Operation and Service Procedures book. All of our resources are available at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.